This video is to explain the different outputs that are available on a Victron Multi Plus. Victron Multi Plus has an AC input, AC out 1 and AC out 2. AC in is bi-directional, so don't get too hung up on the fact that it's the input. It is also the output, so you don't actually need to connect anything to AC out 1 or 2 if you're using it in what I call single-legged mode, which I'll, I'll come on to explain. AC out 1 is what's known as the protected output. This output is protected, so if, if you lose the grid, this, will, this output will carry on being fed from the battery until the battery is exhausted. AC out 2 is live when the grid is live and if you lose the grid AC output 2 will drop and cut off your loads. Between both outputs in total you can't pull more than 50 amps um, which is the capacity of the unit. Um, there's contactors which are a relay inside the unit and they can only um, open and close on a maximum load of 50 amps so you mustn't pull more than 50 amps across the pair and obviously when it's in UPS mode uh, and it's running from the battery AC out 1 can only supply loads up to um, about 20 amps um, if, if it's the 5000 VA unit so you mustn't pull more than 20 amps out of that when it's off in off grid or grid failure mode so I've got my grid, grid meter here, so I've got my main incoming supply here, and there are no other loads at all. So the very first thing after the ore main meter is the Victron. There can't be any other loads, can't be any inverters, no battery charges, nothing. It has to be um, the first thing that's on the line from the grid is the Victron. And the reason that is, is because inside the, Vic inside the Victron there's a, um, an energy, energy meter, and it's always trying to sort of balance balance out the, the, the draw against the push to make sure that the, the battery is, is supplying the loads or if you're deciding to export to the grid. So it has to, all, all of the all current or all energy has to cross the Victron in order for it to work correctly. So this would be your existing consumer unit, um, which would have an RCD inside it in the normal way. Again, when the grid's present you mustn't exceed 50 amps in total and when you lose the grid you mustn't pull more than 20 amps because that's the capacity the inverting capacity of the unit so that could be a problem if you got your existing consumer unit and just plugged it straight into ac output one then it's pretty likely that you'll easily exceed 20 amps if you had a you know a dishwasher tumble dryer and an electric water heater come on so you could you could just put the your existing consumer unit onto AC output 2 again as long as you don't exceed 50 amps but of course you would you wouldn't get the benefit of the UPS function so to get around this or to solve it what you can do is split your loads so you'd have two consumer units and you would move your light load so in my case I've got my computers cameras security smoke alarms my boiler just a gas boiler that you know, doesn't use hardly any electricity so all my light loads are on one consumer unit and then all your moderate loads would be on the the other consumer unit so this would fail in the event of a grid but ac output one would keep on going it's important that you've got the rcd protection or rcbo's it's more common now with the latest edition of the regs that each circuit has its own rcbo which is an individual um, RCD protected output. So that's how you can effectively just split split your loads to ensure that when you're in UPS mode, the only light loads are on the protected output and you won't exceed the 20 amps. And then your more moderate or heavier loads will be on AC output too. Again, in total, when the grid's present, you can't exceed 50 amps here. So if you had a car charger running overnight and an electric boiler and not an electric boiler immersion heater hot tub and everything it's actually pretty likely that you could exceed that um, amount of power so what you can do is effectively have the Victron to be downstream so in this case 
you'd have a consumer unit here. Come out a little bit. This could be your existing consumer unit, but what we've added here is um, an ET112 energy meter. So because the energy is no longer, well not all of the energy isn't crossing the Victron anymore, you've got other loads here, so you might have a car charger, boilers or what have you, or in, in, you may have also, um, you know, as is the case now, you might have other, other loads coming out here. You might have a garden shed, you might have, um, you know, a garage, you might have other loads than that that are being pulled off of the consumer unit. And all these loads, or you might have a car charger going out there, um, and the Victron won't see these loads. So what you have to do is add an energy meter in here so it can monitor, and it has to be right at the very edge of your um, uh, installation. It's got to be right at the meter, effectively, before anything else. So in this diagram, because you've now got... Let me just press control Z on that control. In this diagram, you don't really need AC output 2 any longer because you can just put all your heavy loads and what have you, or loads that you don't care about being protected, you just hang off of the upstream consumer. So you don't actually need to use AC output 2, AC output 2 at all. all. All of your existing loads like that will just run here and you just use AC output one for your light loads or what we'd call the protected loads. Again, it can't exceed 50 amps, although you'd, you'd engineer this, put smaller breakers and things in there. So the loads that have been hang, hanging off, the loads that hang off of this never exceed 20 amps or so, about 19 amps, which is the capacity of the inverter. It's important that this consumer unit here, so if you've got, if this is your existing consumer unit, which is all RCD protected, it's important that the sub-consumer that's running your light loads or your protected loads also has an RCD inside it as well. This is because in the event that you lose the grid, and there's no grid supply to that, effectively what the inside the Victron there's a relay that connects the earth terminal to the neutral terminal, which creates what's known as like what I term a fake PME or a fake TNCS uh, earth. This, this is required because the, the RCD works by checking the, the current imbalance between live and neutral uh, and any, any drain back to earth. And if that relay wasn't present, um, this would just be floating and it wouldn't detect a failure. So it's important that the sub-consumer unit has an RCD in it or each of the individual circuits are RCD protected. So that's very important. Don't just put... Um, don't just put um, breakers or fuses here. You must put an RCD there for these loads to be um, you know, to be safe. The other option, if you're not bothered about um, the UPS function, is that you don't actually need to have anything on the output whatsoever. So I, I call this single-legged mode. So in this in this mode here. If you're not bothered about using the protected outputs, um, you just have your existing consumer unit and you just have a, a separate spur coming off, driving the Victron. Again, you must have this energy meter so it can see what's going on throughout throughout your loads because it, nothing's crossing it, so therefore it can't measure the load. But in this, this is probably the simplest installation where it's just one, one spur going into it. It will protect all of your, sorry, it won't protect the loads, but you'll get the benefit of the battery. So up to the capacity of the, the inverter, um, it will balance out and effectively all, all of your loads, whatever loads they are, um, it will, um, you'll get the benefit of the energy storage. This in a way is the most simplest installation you can do because you're not having to move wires around. You're not having to put, you know, split, separate your loads out or do anything or worry about your loads exceeding the capacity of the inverter. So everything just works as is. You can you can put car chargers, whatever you like, hanging off of here. Um, and this will support up to 20 amps. So effectively, the input becomes the output, so it's bi-directional. So at night time, at night time the, um, it would be charging the batteries in that direction. And then during the day, it will be discharging back up the input. 
So don't get too hung up on whether the input is the output or the output is the input. It's bi-directional and it works in both directions. Uh, hopefully that um, explains some of the options and why it can get a bit confusing as to which ones you can, which terminals you should use. Uh, and essentially, there's there's a number of options there, and you don't have to use all of them.